minutes before 7 o'clock, a live look at Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where there's a lot of wind, rain, and thunder this Tuesday morning. Weather experts and people in harm's way are keeping an eye on a possible tropical storm developing off the coast. A very good Tuesday morning, everyone, and a very happy Cinco de Mayo. Thank you so much for waking up with the Valley today on this May 5th. I'm Kyle Bosch here with Lisa Badeau, and we're just getting started with nonstop news and weather all the way up to the top of the hour to help you plan your day. A mother is being hailed as a hero this morning as we get new information today about the shooting deaths of four people in a small Wisconsin town that we first told you about yesterday morning. Menasha police say an 11-year-old girl, her father, and another man were killed. They say despite being shot three times, the girl's mother got her other two children off the public fishing bridge before the gunman could reach them. The mother is in critical condition. Police say the victims were chosen at random by the gunman, who then turned the gun on himself. The gunman was apparently upset after having an argument with his girlfriend. A Fargo man is dead after the semi he was driving rolled over in Grand Forks County. Yeah, that crash happened yesterday afternoon near Niagara, North Dakota. The highway patrol says the man was headed west on Highway 2 when he lost control of his rig. Troopers could release the man's name later today. An Argusville, North Dakota man who is charged with the rapes of two students at NDSU is expected to change his plea to guilty next month. KFGO News is reporting a change of plea hearing is scheduled for June 22nd for 39-year-old Stanley Bush. He's accused of raping two women at Knife Point at an apartment near the campus last December. A bill that was passed during the North Dakota legislative session has special significance for North Dakota mom. Tammy Shapusky pushed lawmakers to pass a bill in memory of her daughter, who died at her daycare when she was just six months old. Yeah, the new law, which she calls Addison's Law, is set to take effect in North Dakota in August. It requires all infant providers in the state to take a slate, safe sleep training course. They'll have to take that course at least once a year to stay informed about sleep safety for infants. It's now 6.51. Time for weather and traffic on the ones. To help plan your Tuesday, let's start with meteorologist Mick Kerr. Thank you. And it, if you're waking up Devil's Lake, Carrington, New Rockford, Jamestown, into central North Dakota, the sky is cloudy. And it will likely stay that way this morning. The rest of the region will be mostly sunny. And this afternoon, northeastern North Dakota looks like it could be a little on the cloudy side. We're going to about 77, the top temp in southeast North Dakota, warmer than yesterday by about 5 degrees. Even northwest Minnesota at about 70 should be warmer by about 3 to 4 degrees. Now we have some rain coming for tonight. But for southeast North Dakota this afternoon, Fargo 77, Oak 74, Wapiton 75, and Ellendale 75. South-southeast winds, though, near 20 miles an hour. West-central Minnesota, mostly sunny, dry, windy, lots of sunshine all day. Great day to be at the lakes to do all of that work on your lake lot or uh, doing a lot of planting and keep those planters moving out in the farm fields of northern Minnesota and northeastern North Dakota. The sky, sunshine, warm, breezy, great day to get that done and rain coming for tonight and tomorrow. How much? Well, starting at about 8 or 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, we're going to find rain in the rain gauge to the tune of an inch or two during the day tomorrow and tomorrow night. Valley City southward. Looks like, uh, again, all of these rain and thunderstorms are going to be moving from south to north, and they could leave a path of somewhere between one to two inches of rain. Keep your fingers crossed. We do need it. The earth is going to soak it up. And there are those clouds moving northward, and a few of them have moved into Lamore and Dickey and western Ransom and Sargent County. Also, will be tracking north there along Highway 1. Got rain from Chicago to Rochester, Minnesota, north of Des Moines, around Ames, back into western parts of Kansas and the panhandle of Texas. And we have this southeast wind, which was going to ratchet up here during the day. Up to 40 now in Grand Forks, uh, or East Grand Forks. You were down to 36 earlier. Fargo-Moorhead looking downtown, 47 degrees. Let's get a traffic report now from Al Ahmed. Good morning, Mick. Good morning, everyone. I'm at uh, I-29 and uh, 19th, 19th Avenue North. We have a stalled semi to tell you about this morning. The semi is on the ramp off I northbound I-29 on the 12th Avenue North. It's uh, just kind of sitting there. I didn't see any flashes or anything on it, but it must be a fairly serious problem. But 
So make sure you're looking out for that. that. There's so much traffic on that ramp. That's one you're really going to want to watch out for. As for traffic, it is, it's picked up a bit from what it was. Uh, I-29 traffic northbound is heavier than southbound, and it's pretty darn thick actually, between 32nd Avenue and uh, probably Main Avenue. Also, traffic is definitely picked up on westbound Interstate 94. That's traffic, Al Allen Valley Today traffic. It's now six minutes before seven. The parents of a runaway teenager are asking for help locating the girl and her boyfriend. They say 16-year-old Akira Morin ran away from her Bismarck home with her boyfriend, Jacob Ellers, over the weekend. Her family thinks the teens are in the Wapiton area, but may be on their way to Montana. Now, in the last couple of months, police or parents have contacted Valley News Live about six missing or runaway teens. Police say it's important for parents to communicate their kids and figure out what might be going on with, in their lives. They also say it's important to explain to kids that they could face charges for running away. Now, if you have any information on where Morin or her boyfriend might be or about any missing teenager, you're asked to contact your local law enforcement. A Minnesota high school is getting some help from recent retirees and subs after five math teachers were hurt in a car crash. The Eden Prairie teachers were on their way to a conference in Duluth when their SUV crashed and rolled. Injuries range from concussions to broken bones. The principal actually doesn't expect two of them to even be back this school year. The first oil refinery built in the U.S. since the 1970s is up and running in Dickinson, North Dakota. The Cody Prairie Refinery produced its first batch of diesel yesterday. The refinery will bring in about 20,000 barrels of crude oil each day and turn that into 7,000 barrels of diesel fuel. Managers say they're running at about 50% capacity right now, but will be ramping up over the next several weeks. The plant costs $435 million and has a staff of 80 full-time employees. Work is done on the largest transmission expansion project in the upper Midwest. The last major project was more than 40 years ago. Project organizers gathered yesterday near Mapleton to celebrate the CapEx 2020. It's a 240-mile transmission line that stretches from Fargo to St. Cloud, Monticello. The project is a joint effort of 11 transmission-owning utilities in North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and South Dakota. UND has released its list of your suggestions for a new nickname to replace Fighting Sue, and it's quite the long one. About 1,200 submissions on the consideration list. Among the considered suggestions, the Meadowlarks, the Sodbusters, Big Green, the old nickname, the Flickertails, the Blizzards, the Nodax, and the Chill, just to name a few. The nickname committee will be whittling down the list to one that will be then submitted for a public vote. If you'd like to check out the full list of considered nicknames, along with the ones that won't be considered, you can head to our website, valleynewslive.com, and click on the hot button. Well, as you take items out to the curb during cleanup week, or maybe you're just doing a little organization in your uh, storage area as you get ready for the summer, you may want to think about how you can give back to the community and just instead of just having that stuff end up in the dump. The Valley Today's Christy Larson joins us live from the ReStore in Moorhead with more on how you can donate some of those old items to a good cause. Good morning, Christy. Good morning, Kyle and Lisa. As you can see, we have the big store right behind us, and we're talking all about it today, about how there's a number of different items that you could donate right out of your house, or maybe if you need new items, you could come here to buy them and give them a new home. And Pete's been telling us all morning, why don't you tell us again, who does this all help benefit? So the ReStore is a part of Habitat for Humanity. Um, and it really started in Winnipeg. People were calling out the affiliate there and saying, hey, I have these cabinets that I'm taking out of the, my house. Can you use them for a Habitat house? In our Habitat houses, we used all new products, but they thought, hey, well, maybe there's a market for that. And so they opened up the ReStore and started selling it. And the proceeds go to help build houses. So it's kind of a full circle thing. And you guys are building two houses this year, this summer, and so you also need volunteers for that. People can volunteer in the store by helping out maybe do the cash register. I mean, it really can be any way that you can help give back to the community. Yeah, lots of volunteer opportunities. Uh, and our build, our build volunteer opportunities are all online, um, but there's other things we need too. Like I mentioned earlier, mowing the lawn, helping us send letters, making phone calls, um, speaking on our behalf. Um, we, it really helps, especially when I go out and talk to businesses about potentially coming out to having a group uh, come to a volunteer or uh, being a sponsor. It helps that we have somebody kind of inside um, as a champion for Habitat that can speak on our behalf. So if you volunteered on our site before, you really enjoyed it, uh, we could really use your help going to your people at your company and just saying, hey, maybe this is something we can sponsor mm -hmm. or uh, bring a group out to, to volunteer. 
Yes, yeah, so many different ways. And again, Kyle and Lisa, it could even be the littlest things like even donating your old kitchen cabinet handles or maybe even coming here to buy some new ones anyway to help out. And we do have a link on valleynewslive.com under that hot button. Anybody who's ever uh, redone their kitchen cabinet handles knows th those are not cheap. So a great opportunity <laughs> to maybe go find ones you like at a discount or, like she said, you know, donate them because somebody's going to want to use them. Exactly. Christy Larson reporting live for us this morning. Thank you, Christy. To stay updated on breaking news and weather alerts wherever you go, be sure to sign up for our Valley News Live text alerts. Just head to our website, valleynewslive.com, and click the text alerts button for all the details. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Today's question, about 38 million Americans use these every day. Two-thirds are women. The answer, contact lenses. I guess I'm part of the one-third that aren't women, but use them every day. And I'm glad the answer is contact lenses instead of nylons or high heels. Yeah, that's probably good yeah. for everybody yeah. involved. There's a few men who like to walk around in high heels. Not these two. Not these uh, two. No. Starting about 50, heading for about 75. The top temp today should be a wonderful afternoon. I hope you can enjoy a little on the breezy side. Be very careful with burning. You'd want to wear those open-toed shoes today. Open-toed heels. Indeed. Because it's so nice. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. More local news and weather in just 25 minutes. Have a great Tuesday, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow morning.